Hey, Jack, welcome back. Thank you, Jason. Nice to see you. Jack, last time we talked about elder fraud. Um, today, I kind of want to talk about you know the solo agers. Um, that's something we're seeing more and more common um, nowadays than probably 20, 30 years ago. You know, you know, Jason, it's a really tricky um, uh, situation, if you will, that, that uh, most of the plans that we put in place, um, either clients working with me or people on their own, um, are dependent on somebody, they, right? They, they set things up for their kids to look after them, or they have their spouse to rely upon. And, and I've taken on now a number of clients um, who are on their own completely, and some are working, some are not. And, um, and all of a sudden, the plans are very different. And um, there's, a real, um, it's a, there's a real balance that has to be struck between, if you will, keeping a low profile and yet being prepared if there's any kind of an emergency. So right, you know, for, right. people work, for people living on their own, if, uh, if they encounter some kind of medical event, then who helps them? What, what measures do they have in place to get immediate attention? You know, if, if you're living with somebody, they can call 911. But if you're by yourself, how do you do that? And, and, and what measures? And, and, and then when you hit, not, if you're able to call 911, do, does the ambulance know where to go? You know, so that, I mean, it, it sounds, you know, it sounds simple, but for people who have worked hard to, maintain their privacy you have to balance that with the ease of of being able to find you if uh if you need help and jack not saying everyone's in the situation but we're, we're seeing a lot of um single females maybe to the point that they're kind of by themselves they're independent right and they yeah. do well in life so they they do have the means to take care of themselves but you know there's specific situations where because they have done well and they're kind of by themselves it makes it could also make them an easy target for scammers right you could have uh, a, a person that comes into their life uh, who pretends to be very caring of them uh, and i think both of us were talking about that we have seen this scenario kind of play out and it's essentially a, a fraudulent situation right they're trying to steal their money they're trying to they're, they're pretending to be someone that they aren't what are the safeguards that you can put in place to help someone to deal with the worst case scenario not obviously not everyone deals with the situation and hopefully most people are are in relationships that are loving and that are caring uh, regardless of what age they meet these people but what about the worst case scenario what are you advising and helping people with well you, you know jason you, you're the scenario you bring up comes in in all directions and 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 both genders and and all different ages. So, you know, I have, I have one client um, where the, the parent is, is actually in their late eighties and, and has now been befriended um, by someone much younger than them. And, and the child, the, the adult child is saying, what's going on in this relationship? So you start to look at, again, some of the same controls of, of ensuring that the, um, the wills and the trusts and those kinds of documents aren't changed suddenly. Um, so you have to get to the attorney who has that information. You look at the financial assets and make sure that um, no additional access has been granted. You can even talk to the uh, institution about limiting disbursements over a certain dollar amount, just to, just to maintain a control of, of what's there. Um, and, um, and at the same time, you could talk to your parent about gaining uh, view-only access and uh, being able to see what's going on without interrupting their life. Um, you know, if you, and that's if you're talking about your parent who's been befriended, befriended suddenly. If you're on your own, um, you know, nowadays when, when people are dating, what do they do? I guess they, they Google each other. They try to figure out who the person is. Um, but we also talk to our clients about, if you will, some, um, some gentle background checking. And, and if, if their relationship is, is developing and say, you know, let's, let's have a look at the person that you're starting to see and, 
how much do you know about that person? And right. still putting in some of those other controls, but more for their personal safety that uh, they just want to understand who the person is, where they've been, and, um, and maybe even suggest to them a couple of questions they might ask along the way to, to give themselves a little bit of comfort. Yeah, so I, I know you, you definitely um, put people's mind at ease when it comes to that. But also another big thing that you do is um, prior to maybe someone just deciding that they really want to get married to an individual or moving in with them, um, that you kind of create the safeguards to protect them in those situations too. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're talking about the relationship has gone that far, um, even just moving in, there's a potentially there's a legal piece, there's an insurance piece, um, there's clearly a financial piece. And um, we'll talk to the client about, first of all, asking the questions about, hey, if, if I'm going to move in with you, you know, what's our level of commitment? And um, if, it's, if it's 100%, then let's make sure that some of these other measures are, are that they represent that commitment. And, um, and then we will introduce some specialists in the discussion to talk about different types of insurance policies or different ways of structuring financial arrangements. So, uh, so my clients are looked after. Right, right. No, that that's super important stuff. So yeah, these tips were, were great. And I guess, when should people be contacting you? Well, hopefully, Jason, uh, well before any of these big changes occur. Um, there, there are occasions where, where we have to respond, but obviously uh, these are huge life events and, and um, a little bit of preparation will make a, a tremendous amount of difference. So even really prior to people having these life events or meeting someone or even they're thinking about there's, there might be changes in their life, that's a good time to do just kind of a preliminary assessment with your company. Absolutely. And, and, and by the way, you know, even after the assessment is done, um, our, our lives change and, and risks emerge at, out of the blue. So it's just staying in consistent, constant contact so that uh, we understand as things change in their lives, we can be better prepared. Excellent, Jack. Thanks for coming on and giving us all this information. Thank you, Jason. Take care.